In this episode, I go back in time. I get myself out on the water, and then I get myself in trouble. Can you see that? Two, three. Oh, it was two, three. Now it's come back to two, four. Don't get in that. You'll probably die. Something's been bugging me for quite some time. This is the cockpit seating, and on there are teak slats, which I've always hated. As time's gone by, they've shrunk and the screw heads have become proud, uh, so you catch your feet on them. Also, they harbour dirt. Time to take them off. Well, here goes for nothing. Hope I'm making the right decision on this. Got MC Hammer on the job. Some of those didn't come off too easy. The next thing to do is to get all the mastic off. There's lots of it on here. Got this handy tool that I had when I was uh, on the building business. Um, scraping uh, corners and flats. This is especially made for getting mastic or silicon or whatever it is out of uh, bathroom tiles and that kind of thing. So it kind of works on here, so we're gonna give it a go. But it's still a bit of hard work. Oh dear, oh dear. Yeah, this is going to take a bit of doing. Best you go off and um, watch the rest of the video. I'll be a while. In case you're wondering, we do get out on the water in this episode, so stay tuned. Meanwhile, it's all about the preparation. Gonna show you a little tip here. Um, if you have problems getting your mainsail up, get a piece of paper like that, something that's uh, biodegradable, um, and you spray it with this stuff. It's like a Teflon uh, spray. The idea being that uh, you put it on the wad, and then you haul that up the mast, and it will lubricate your sail track. I posted a bit of this on Facebook, and had a lot of people saying, Barry, you need to get hydraulics and electrics. No, you're missing the point. That all goes wrong at sea. Keep okay. it simple, keep it physical, and you can't go wrong. This <laughs> air was full of water. <laughs> I think we're good. Reef. Putting a mark just here. That uh, unfortunately moves about. I need to do something with that. Uh, and that's going to correspond to the new reef which is about there. I need to put a strop through there, up to that eye. Put this on a while ago, a bit of scrap that I found in the garbage, uh, making a good holder for my, my tablet and my navigation gear on. But doing a little modification, it's a DJI holder for a controller um, for the, uh, the drones. Um, that fits in there perfectly. A few tie grips and job done. Yeah, problem I had, it was um, it was too close to this bar, which I needed to grab onto in rough weather, uh, where I had it sat before, and um, also it could fall out. So this, I'm hoping, if I can do it one-handed, will be perfect. There you go. Look at that. That's brilliant. <laughs> That's about the best thing I've ever invented. I love it. Look at that. And I can grab hold of that now. Perfect. And that's one of the great flexibilities of using uh, tablets for navigation. I can take it down from the bridge deck straight into here and it's there for me on my navigation station. Sweet. The next job was to get Squeaky the dinghy uh, secured to the deck and ready for sea. put a cover on the saloon hatch just in case I got it wrong. I have done in the past and put a few scratches in the perspex. Got her sitting on fenders. Next door neighbor laughing because I'm talking to myself. <laughs> he always does that. He's a bit, uh, he's a bit. Uh... I'm a bit weird, I know. <laughs> Pretty much clear the forward hatch, uh, but I need ventilation. I'm sleeping in there tonight. So I've got to reposition this a bit. 
The pressure's on trying to get out of here. Uh, got the bicycle down below. Just the wheels put down there. But what's this? A new acquisition. It's upside down, but that's a blow up canoe. Bye bye! bye, -bye. bye, -bye. bye, -bye. bye, -bye. Oh, I need to work. Be back next week for barbecue, probably. Right. <laughs> Daddy is moving. It's quite a hard time getting hold of the guys at Bridge Control here. I don't know if it's my radio or what, but I never seem to be able to get through. So my friends have just relayed for me. And uh, it's a problem because I haven't uh, the big radio on the deck here. So I have to uh, run down to use the radio. And at the moment there's quite a lot of current and there's also wind. So Shaddy's trying to take off towards a mud bank. <laughs> It's all good fun. Got the washing out, and there's a mud bank. Traffic stopped, so we should be good to go in a minute. And there she blows it's gently on the um, gently on the uh, throttle. Will it fit? <laughs> yeah, I think we're fully open. <laughs> it's always scary. Yeah, we've got a few feet on there. It's amazing the kind of craft you see on the river. This next boat is something I featured very briefly in another video. Uh, it's a Fair Mile B, built in the 1940s. Very rare, only a few left in the world and it's unusual to see one here in New Zealand. To tell you this story, I've got to take you back to 2010, Cornwall, England, and a visit to a boatyard. I've been doing a bit of uh, research lately on motor torpedo boats in the Second World War, and there's one group of boats called uh, Fair Mile B. Well, it's called Fair Mile, it's the company, Fair Mile B is the boat. And uh, there's only about four left. I think there's some in, in Canada or somewhere, but only four in, in the UK. And I just walked in here, and here she is. This is Western Lady 4, uh, formerly ML526, motor launch. Um, she's humongous. I didn't realize these boats are so big. It's what they call double diagonal built. There's wood goes one way, then there's another layer of wood goes the other way. It makes them immensely strong, but very difficult to repair. And this boat is, what, 70 years old now, uh, built I think. Sometime in the early 40s, I believe. Bit of maritime history. Sister ships separated by 80 years and half a world. This is where we're spending the night. There's some boats over there. Kind of running out of water. Um, yeah, got to be very careful here. This is Limestone Island. A beautiful little anchorage, first time I've been here, but it was a bit shallow. Not good, 2.6, come on, go the other way, please. See the chain? It's actually pulled back on itself. I've got the stubber off at the moment because it's just twisting and turning all the time. Wow. Could this be the change of tide I've been waiting for? Two other boats over there. Want to try out my new toy, but it's just too bouncy. Well, there you go. You can see a bounce in there. Come to this beautiful island and I was going to do some kayaking, uh, go explore, but um, I had a problem. I, I kind of didn't um, do my homework properly 
and I ended up anchoring in a place which is a bit too shallow to actually be here and um, it's it's a busy time of year at the moment I know the anchorages down the way there are all full of people and this is a bit more remote so I was loath to move and spend another two and a bit hours going further down the river and then finding I couldn't find a place to anchor so here we are and we're at the bottom of the tide and it's hard to tell the exact time the tide turns because we're up a river also there's like eddies and there's whirly bits and currents and all kinds of stuff to take into account so it's not an exact science so we should be at the bottom of the tide now but I'm seeing leaves and things going past me upwind and we're still hanging backwards up into the wind the wind is coming from behind us and the anchor's straining like at an angle like that which is telling me we still got current we still got water going out and uh, I've only got um, just over a meter of water under the keel and the boats bouncing this is the worst thing you could have in shallow water bang no I calculated we'd have a meter of water the boat is finally turning now please let this be the bottom of the tide please otherwise we're gonna have a problem the boats over there are, are slowly turning as well and there's two other boats here the three of us have been dancing for the last few hours we're kind of broadside to this swell now this is a bit disconcerted 2.4 so I've exact, actually I've exactly a meter under the water, under the uh, boat now. And I keep thinking, it can't go any further, it can't go any further. It should be the bottom of the tide, but the tide is still going out. And it was dropping at quite a rate, which doesn't make sense. It should be just gently going out. Um, there shouldn't be much of it left in the last few minutes of the tide. But it, we're up a river, as I said. It's obviously the and we're, we're we're turning back now we're turning back the wrong way we should be spinning the other way for the incoming tide <laughs> it's too late to move the boat I didn't 2.3 I'm making a big thing of this because it's scary um, I, I messed up it's my fault I should have lifted the anchor up I reckon we'd have a, a meter below us which we still just have I'm either brilliant or I made a mistake <laughs> I think I'm actually just brilliant all right there can't be much water left to go out God damn I've been safe and sound in the marina for goodness how long now and I got kind of used to it and to come out here and get scared again I'm gonna spend the night out here now all by myself Burr. can you see that two three oh it was two three now it's come back to two four I'm gonna go check my figures again well it turns out I probably am a genius yeah I was up here tidying all that stuff away bits and pieces I've even left a fender out I oh, was bad of me and then the boat turned so now the chain is out the front of the boat where it's supposed to be the waves are coming from the front the winds come from and the boats lying down uh, in the wind perfect uh, so that means that the tide has now turned there's nothing going out so without even looking back there I know we're in more water than we were before well the Sun's going down um, all is well on board so there's only one thing left even though I've already been here like four or five hours or something uh, only when I knew the boat was safe uh, can I have my anchor beer so uh, cheers And it is the most gorgeous morning this morning. Absolutely beautiful. It's time to get out and do some exploring. Time to get this beast out. What is it, you ask? Well, I'll tell you in a minute. On the morning coffee. But um, 
on a bit of a schedule today i want to go down to a, another little place uh, further down the river uh, the weather closes in in a few days time so enjoying a, a few sunny days it's beautiful this morning the wind's just coming up a little bit but i'm going to take the new kayak which apparently is called poo <laughs> uh, as in winnie the Pooh, but it's spelt in the in a finnish way because it came from uh, uh johanna and timo um i bought it off them at the last minute i haven't paid them for it yet <laughs> i'll see if it i'll see if it works first no it worked but it's all blown up in a hurry and it's all lumpy and it's not right so when you see it don't criticize it i'll uh, i'll sort it out later but i'm just going to throw it in the water and see where we go because it's calm and nice i can get off the back of the boat put a life jacket on should be okay but it'll be fun <laughs> i'm taking a waterproof camera with me just in case a coffee first You can see it's all lumpy and wrong. But we'll sort that out another time. Let's get in the water. Right, I put a rope on there. Bowling, zip tied the end, so that's not gonna come off. Don't wanna lose it. Okay, now um, it's a twin one. So <laughs> I'm not sure I can get my fat ass into that front one there, which seems to be the better one to be in if you're by yourself. The back position is very close to the back. I think if I sit in that, the front end is going to be sort of <laughs> up in the air. I don't know. All right, let's just throw it in the water and uh, do it, yeah? <laughs> I'm a bit, a bit nervous. Why do I do this stuff? It's a big old brook. I'm standing on the rope before I throw it in. Well, it's sort of floating the right way up. <laughs> Got a bit of a starboard list, Captain. All right, let's take it to the back and see what happens. Come on, Pooh. Lobsided canoe. Pooh, the lobsided canoe. Yeah, I got it. If my, my mother could see me now, she'd be like, don't get in that, you'll probably die. She's probably right. I had a canoe years ago. Uh, it was a shitty canoe, but it had a good jacket with it, which I still got on board. So I'm gonna wear that for safety. I'm not completely reckless. New Zealand has a lot of UV rays when the sun shines, so I'm gonna lube up before I go. Another safety thing, I'm gonna take VHF Marine Radio with me. Also, uh, in case things go wrong, a mini towel, uh, to film the hilarity, a waterproof camera and a super duper selfie stick thing imaging me. Uh, put that in a waterproof bag, which I should really attach to something so it doesn't get lost if I turn over. And that's it for this episode. If you want to find out what happens between me and Pooh, the lopsided canoe, then you need to check in next time uh, when we'll be visiting this island and this incredible place. Later, when moving to another anchorage, I bump into these two pirates who uh, basically kidnap me and force me to drink beer with them. If you haven't already, please think about subscribing. And if you have already subscribed, please don't forget to press the notifications bell. That way you'll never miss another episode of The Old Sea Dog. Thank you so much to my incredible patrons for their superb support. Thank you for watching Facebook, Instagram for real live updates. Until next time, take care. Let's go find a boat. Hello, pretty cat. Hello, Barry. Did you solve the problem about not having any money to buy a boat? Um, no, I didn't. Actually, do you have any solutions? No, I don't. No, oh, never mind then. Oh, but you can strike me. Got to go home now. Goodbye. Goodbye. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.